Good morning. We will continue our discussion on the index properties of soil. Just for us to refresh, we started off with what index properties mean, and we had said that index properties include the particle size distribution, the plasticity features, and relative density. Now we had defined gradation analysis. We had defined a few terms based on sieve analysis and hydrometer analysis. We had defined effective size d10, we had defined uniformity coefficient and coefficient of curvature and we had defined and discussed relative density in the previous video. We try to solve a few simple numerical problems. Number one, a sample of sand has a volume of 1000 milliliters in its natural state and its minimum volume when compacted is 840 milliliters when gently poured in a measuring cylinder its maximum volume is found to be 1370 milliliters you're asked to find the relative density now if all you are given with is the volume and you don't have the mass so let's assume that m be the unknown mass of the sample of sand used so m is occupied in three different forms in this particular question. Number one is M is occupied in 1000 milliliters, M is occupied in 840 milliliters, and M is occupied in 1370 milliliters. So the same mass when occupied in the least volume will give you the maximum density, and the same mass when occupied in the maximum volume will give you the loosest density. So fundamentally, rho minus rho minimum by rho max minus, minus rho minimum multiplied by rho max by rho is our equation for relative density or density index dr in which rho is m by 1000 and rho minimum is m by 1370 and rho maximum is the same m by the least volume which is 840 so you have rho here you have rho max here you have rho minimum here m is same throughout so on substitution into this equation m gets cancelled out from the numerator and the denominator and you will get a value of around 69.8 percentage which is a relative density Next question, a relative density test conducted on sand yielded the following results. Maximum void ratio E max is 1.23, minimum void ratio E min is equal to 0 0.48 and relative density is 42 percentage. You are asked to find the corresponding in situ voids ratio or E. So we'll use the equation for dr, which is in terms of voids ratio. So E max minus E by E max minus E minimum is the relative density. E max minus E by E max minus E minimum, the relative density, the value of which is already given, 0 0.42. Now E max, maximum void ratio, is given as 1.23, and minimum void ratio E min is given as 0 0.48 so the only unknown turns out to be E or the in situ voids ratio so you can just substitute E max and E minimum into this equation and on solving you'll get a value of around 0 0.915 now we'll move to the discussion on the Atterberg limits which is something related to the plasticity feature of soil and it is for cohesive soil or clay soil and in the first module we had discussed that soil can be cohesionless or cohesive soil now cohesive soil or clay soil in general has got its plasticity feature due to the adsorbed water which is again due to the negative charge on the clay particle surface which attracts the cations and further the water dipole and it creates a diffused double layer and this diffused double layer which has got a varying thickness of around 400 Armstrongs 
is the one that's responsible for imparting the plasticity feature to the clay minerals. And a Terberg limit is something related to plasticity. It deals with the consistency of soil. Now, consistency is a physical state of existence of soil. For example, if you if you have a soil which is firm or soft or stiff or hard, and if you're notating that way, uh, you are saying something about its consistency. So, uh, plasticity, on the other hand, is the ability of soil to undergo deformation without cracking. So, a uh, soft clay would be plastic in nature because it allows you to play around with that without it getting cracked. Now, the plasticity, like we said, is due to the presence of adsorbed water resulting from the negative charge on the surface of clay particles. Now, the details of which can be found in any standard textbook which says something about the clay mineralogy. So anyways, the negative charge on the surface of clay minerals and particles are responsible for attracting the water dipoles and it creates a film of water above it and around it and it's called an absorbed water. It doesn't flow under gravity. So this imparts plasticity to the clay. Now, the water content at which soil changes from one state to the other is called as a consistency limit or the Atterberg limit. So Atterberg limit is nothing but a water content. It's a percentage of water, MW by MS. So it's a water content at which soil changes from one state to the other. Now state means that it can be liquid, it can be semi-solid, it can be solid or it can be plastic. So if the soil's behavior changes from plastic to liquid or liquid uh, or, or perhaps plastic to semi-solid, etc, etc. That happens at a particular water content depending on the properties of the soil. So that particular water content is called as an Atterberg limit like this. For example, you have the water content in the x-axis and you have the volume on the y-axis and the soil is in the liquid state at this point. It changes to plastic state on drying. Again, if it's subsequently dried further, it will go to a semi-solid state and when it's dried further, it will turn to be a solid state. So there are boundary lines marked here, which are nothing but the water contents between the liquid and the plastic limit, between the plastic and the semi-solid limit, and I'm sorry, between the plastic and the semi-solid state, and between the semi-solid state and the solid state. So first one is a liquid limit, liquid state to plastic state. Second one is a plastic limit, plastic state to semi-solid state. Third one is a shrinkage limit, semi-solid state to solid state. So in short, liquid limit LL is a water content at which soil changes from liquid state to plastic state. Likewise plastic limit is a water content at which soil changes from plastic state to semi-solid state. And shrinkage limit is a water content at which soil changes from semi-solid state to a solid state. We'll take up the first one, liquid limit. Now liquid limit, like we just now mentioned, is a water content at which soil changes from the liquid state to a plastic state, which means at this condition, the clay is practically like a liquid, but it possesses a certain amount of shear strength. Okay. Now, the laboratory determination of liquid limit is with the help of an apparatus called as Casse Grande's apparatus, which looks like this. So Casse Grande's apparatus has got a brass cup and it is allowed to fall from a height of one centimeter by operating a, a handle with a rotary mechanism. So there are two there are tools which can help you. One is shown here to cut a groove through the soil that you place inside the brass cup. We'll discuss the procedure, but anyways, this is a brass cup 
this is a grooving tool. Now this is a piece of metal that you use to ascertain that the height of wall is just one centimeters. So there's a rotary mechanism here. You can use this rotary handle to allow the brass cup to go up and down. So like I said, there's a brass cup which drops from one centimeter height when operated with a rotating handle and you have a grooving tool used to cut the soil paste. Now this grooving tool is a cassette grinder's tool and you have another one called the ASTM tool, American Society of Testing Materials as well. So uh, the procedure is listed here. You can take around 120 grams of soil passing through 425 micron sieve and it is made into a paste using water. It is then placed on the cassette grinder's cup and leveled properly. Then you can cut a groove through the center so that the cake or the soil mass that you have kept inside the cassette grinder's cup is split into two pieces or two portions to be precise. And then what you do is you rotate the handle of the apparatus at approximately two revolutions per second to drop the cup. Then you'll have to note the number of blows N required to make the soil on either side to touch 1.2 centimeters at least in the middle. So this picture might give you a better picture. You have the brass cup. You can cut the groove through the center once you have placed the soil inside it. Cut the groove and you rotate the handle and you count the number of blows which means up and down motion that is required to make the soil on either side of this groove to come closer for at least 1.2 centimeters at the middle. So fundamentally your output is number of blows n. Now once this is done you can take the paste out and keep that particular paste for water content determination. Now the paste is then mixed with the parent mass of soil, the paste which doesn't go into the oven is mixed with the parent mass of the soil and the water content is increased. For example, if you had taken let's say 10% of water, you can increase that 10% of water to let's say 12% or perhaps 13% and then you can actually repeat the test with the new water content. So obviously when you have the new water content, you will have a revised number of blow. So intuitively, as you increase the as you increase the water content, the number of blows will decrease because as the soil becomes softer and softer, you will have just a lesser number of drops required to make the soil paste come together. So number of blows and water content are inversely proportional. Now you'll have to repeat these these test for or maybe four or five times such that you get the number of blows above 25 and below 25 so ideally you should get at least two readings above 25 and two readings below 25 to quote an example let's say that the number of blows that you got for the first test is uh, 35 and once you increase the water content, the number of blows that you get is 28. So you have two readings above 25 and you should increase the water content further. So the number of blows drops to let's say 20 and then you increase the water content one more time. And the number of blows that you get in this final installment is let's say 15. So you have two readings of number of blows above 25 and two readings of number of blows below 25 based on which you can draw a curve called as a flow curve like this this is again a picture that was taken from the internet and you have the number of drops n in the log scale in the x-axis and the water content w in the y-axis so the water content corresponding to n is equal to 25 n is equal to 25 
is called as a liquid limit so essentially what you do is you have the number of blows which you get on the day of the experiment and you can get the water content in the next day because you have kept the soil in the oven and the next day when you come you can get the water content so you can plot a graph between the number of blows which is an x-axis again on a semi log graph and water content on y-axis so in that particular graph you can you can identify the water content corresponding to n is equal to 25 and that water content is a liquid limit now this is a straight line the flow curve is a straight line because it's plot between the log scale on x and water content on y and you can get the slope of this particular curve and that is called as a flow index so flow index which is the slope of the curve is an indication of the rate at which the soil loses its strength so which means if you have two kinds of soil which has got two different flow indices you can compare these two so soils to choose which one that you can use for any construction activity based on the flow index because it indicates the rate at which the soil loses its shear strength now, if you take a look at this particular plot you can see that the water content corresponding to n is equal to 25 is the one that we are interested in but we took at least four or five readings two readings north of uh, 25 and two readings south of 25 because that is how we can actually plot a line plot a curve and you can you can have a best fitting line representing all these five points and based on which you can arrive at the water content corresponding to n is equal to 25 because it's an experimental procedure we are not quite sure at what water content you can precisely get n is equal to 25 so you take a two or three readings above n is equal to 25 and two or three readings below n is equal to 25 